Hi, I'm Nick Schott at Guillemot Kayaks. In this fourth episode of Making the Skin on Frame Micro Bootlegger Sport, I'll be fitting the stringers. I made up a quick drawing showing the location of each frame. I'm marking those locations on the strong back I use for my strip built kayaks. Because the kayak tapers towards the ends, the reference location of the frame is the face closest to the nearest end. Risers screwed to cleats will be used to hold the frames at the correct location along the length. I'm only using the risers to establish the lengthwise position. I'll let the stringers define the frame height and center. A couple clamps loosely hold each frame to the risers. The first stringers are what substitute for my shear or gunnel. These are 1.5 inch tall by 3 8 inch thick. They run perfectly parallel to the waterline and as such they serve to establish the height of each frame. In the cockpit area I have some spaces between some frames. These are connected together with mortise and tenon. I didn't dog bone the mortises with the shop bot so I'll use a rasp to quickly round over the corner of the tenon so they fit correctly. This is really just a test fit, so I'm using zip ties to hold the stringers instead of lashing. I wanted to see how things went together before I finalized some of the fits. The stem frames include a little bird's mouth to accept the ends of the keel. Holding the keel in place next to the frame, I mark and cut it to fit. With the shear and keel stringers installed, the frame positions are now defined. I can start adding the rest of the stringers to create the shape of the hull. The micro bootlegger sport design features the same kind of transitioning chine of my petrol play. At the stern, the chine is quite hard, but in front of the cockpit, it becomes more rounded. I'll accomplish this by blending one stringer into another midway along the length. The first chine stringer extends from the stern to a point along the keel line where it blends into the keel stringer. At the point where the chine stringer meets the keel stringer, I create a tapered cut to match the intersection of the two pieces. This fit will need some refining, but I first install the matching chine stringer on the other side. Once both chines are installed, I can make a better cut and touch it up with the block plane. Beginning roughly at the cockpit, a second stringer splits off from the chine stringer. This is gradually tapered to blend smoothly into the chine and then spreads away as it approaches the bow. I started by clamping the cockpit end to the existing stringer. Then I trace the edge of the chine onto the stringer. I brought this to the bandsaw to cut off the excess and cleaned it up with the block plane. Using the plane, I round it over the new edge. Now all the bottom stringers are installed. I checked the alignment looking for wonky shapes, but it looked pretty good without any adjustment. I started installing some of the top stringers while the frame was still upside down. When it became hard to reach things, I flipped the whole deal over. The center four-deck stringer ends at the front of the combing. I transferred the slope of the combing to the stringer and planned it to match. I'm not a fan of being poked in the stomach with sharp sticks, so I trimmed off the end of the stringer appropriately.
The combing and deck side stringer want to occupy the same volume of space. So I marked where they hit, including the slope of the combing. I then whittled out the bits of the stringer causing the problems. The upper four deck stringer also intersects the combing recess, so I marked the angle and cut off the end. The other end of the stringer needs to be plain to lie flat against the stem frame. Now I went back and trimmed the ends of all the remaining stringers. The next day I disassembled everything. This project's really an experiment. I have some ideas on how to do a skin on frame that's a little different and I just want to check them out. I've already made some new frames and added a couple parts. Although zip tying it all together then taking it all apart again adds some unnecessary steps. It allows me to check out how things are working and think about how to proceed. For example, should I add holes for lashing and if so where should they go? Looking at it put together helped figure this all out. I decided to add lashing holes at least in some places, so I used an eighth inch diameter drill to punch the holes. These holes were also countersunk slightly to protect the lashing. I added some more holes to the combing piece to help lash it down. While I had the frame disassembled, I took the opportunity to give all the parts a protective coat of oil. I could do it after the frame is done, but I found that the oil can dissolve the wax coating on the lashing sinew a bit. This can loosen up the knots. In the next episode, I'll be assembling the frame and lashing it together. If you enjoy watching these videos, please hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I'd be happy to answer any questions you put in the comments section. To answer one frequent question, it is my goal to eventually offer plans and possibly kits, but first I need to work out all the details and make sure the design works. I don't know when the plans will be available. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy paddling!